Hello and welcome back to Kirkstone. A uh, bit of a follow up from the most recent video. We did an unboxing of this gorgeous Cristate Euphorbia Lactea and we're going to pop this up now so I thought I'd use this as a an illustrative example of putting up a medium sized succulent in this case a Euphorbia. So what I've got here is I've got my normal four part mix which I've assembled. Now the first part of the mix I always put in the bottom of the pot and what I have here is some raw compost. Doesn't matter which compost you use you can use uh, Levington's, um, John Innes, I'm using a proprietary uh, compost called uh, Black Magic or Jack's Magic at present. So we put about an inch of that in the bottom and into that we'll mix some grow more. Now euphorbias are pretty heavy feeders normally, they're heavier feeders than most cacti so I need to make sure that this plant will be nourished for the next couple of years of growth without having to constantly repot it. So I'm going to put my bushel of grow more phosphate based fertilizer in there and mix it in with this PT substrate. Now that's only in the very bottom of the pot and the reason I do this is to act as a sponge to hold nutrients. So there are more nutrients in the bottom of the pot than there are at the top. And what this tends to do, I've found over the years, is to encourage the plants to send roots downwards in search of the nutrients. Most xerophytes, cacti, other succulents, in this particular case euphorbias, have very shallow rooting systems. They might only go down one or two inches, but they spread over feet or even yards of the desert ground. And that, of course, is the main priority is to actually attract water and to maximise the chance of getting water. But in greenhouse conditions, that's not normally an issue. So what we have to do is we have to encourage them to do something which is slightly alien to their nature, and that's to make deep roots rather than wide roots. Well, they can't make wide roots anyway because they're in a pot. So the first inch or so is that mixture of raw compost and um, the phosphate-based uh, grow more fertiliser. Now the sand I use is a very particular kind of sand. It's a special horticultural sand. Now I don't know if you can see that very well, but it, the grain size is about two and a half to three times bigger even than builder's sand. So it's quite um, coarse. And this of course is injected into the substrate mix not only to provide structure, which it does very, very well, but to aid aeration and also, of course, drainage. One of the biggest issues with having problems with succulent plants and cacti is root rot because of the water gathering around the roots. And once rot sets into a plant's root system, it can be very difficult to rescue the plant. Normally, you have to cut all the roots off and then treat the plant as a cutting. So we've got this really uh, coarse grain sand, horticultural sand, so that's part of the mix. We've got the uh, Jack's Magic compost which is another part of the mix and we've also got this uh, mixed pebble size. So this is slightly larger than you would see in an aquarium for example, slightly larger than fish tank pebble size. So we're talking about a grain size of between four and a half to five millimeters up to about eight millimeters and we've also mixed in with there some larger pebbles which I can't show you because I've used them all in the mix so the mix is one part of compost which is a PT compost in this particular case one part coarse horticultural sand one part very small pebble aggregate and one part larger pebbles so 25% of the mix only is actual organic material. The rest of it is, uh, is ino inorganic structural material. Now the one thing I'm going to add into there, because this is a euphorbia and they can be very heavy feeders, 
is I'm going to mix in about half of a very large spoon of bone meal. Now in America, I don't know if you do bone meal as a fertiliser, but certainly in the United Kingdom and in Europe, bone meal has been a traditional staple of all um, compost mixes and agricultural uses. So, I'm now going to mix those four parts together. And normally, I do about 24, well I'm lying, I always do exactly 24 turns. Then I know that the mix is completely well stirred and roughly proportionately uh, balanced all the way through. Now, it's quite interesting, if I can put this sand back and show you something. If you were to actually look at this mix, considering it's a quarter sand, a quarter small grit and a, a quarter large grit and only 25% organic material, you would think it would just look like a sandy pebbly mess with little bits of compost in it. But in actual fact, when it's all well stirred through, what you can actually see is very much a rich, loamy compost but with extra grit. I hope you can see that. It's actually quite a rich brown colour. And because the horticultural sand that they send is very slightly damp, that actually causes the dry compost to be absolutely perfect for planting new plants into. I don't normally water new cacti and succulents after potting in case there's any root damage and the water causes rot. But it is important that the soil, the compost, the substrate is not bone dry because you don't want to kill off any hair roots, which actually the roots which do the feeding and take up the majority of the water. So a slightly damp compost neither causes rot but facilitates the formation of new hair roots. So that's absolutely perfect. I'm telling you, if I was a plant, I would be very happy to live in that rich, loamy, composty mixture. So put that back in the pot because I need that dish now. Because the next stage is simply to take the pot and put it in the dish. Why? So that we can make sure that there is no spillage. So we take our plant, we take our compost, we take our receptacle and we simply put the few things together. So there's our gorgeous new Euphorbia Lactea Cristata. And we'll fill the pot to a level which is more or less the position that we want the plant to look like. So a few more dollops are going to have to go into there. Really is a lovely mix. This I'm, uh, I'm so happy when I see a mix like this. And I place the plant, and I know it's going to be round about there. Now I'm only going to hope that this plant is going to balance without being staked, because it's quite a shallow root, but it's a long plant, and all of the weight is at the top. So let's have a look. Is this plant going to stay in position? Somehow I doubt it. I'll press that down around the roots and normally I don't do that those of you who've seen my other repotting videos know that I don't normally press down the soil but this is simply in this case to aid stability and there we are we got it so I'll put a little bit more at the top because when this does start to soak up water there will be some subsidence And I'll simply tap that round. I'll knock off any compost which is stuck onto the plant. And then we'll take that lovely, lovely plant out to join its fellow euphorbias on the staging in the greenhouse. So let's have a, a look at that plant. Now there will be pictures of this plant going up very soon on Facebook on the Kirkstone Botanica Facebook page and also on the 
Kirkstone Botanica 2007 Instagram site and we'll be following the progress of this gorgeous gorgeous plant over the course of time on the various social media outlets. So there'll be some still photographs going up capturing its lovely lovely purple green and pink variegated stem and I hope you've enjoyed this latest potting up video of this plant from the Cactus Shop UK so this is Euphorbia Lactea Variegata Cristata all potted up and ready to go so it's good afternoon from Euphorbia Lactea it's good afternoon from the Cactus Shop and it's good afternoon from Kirkstone and Botanica thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed and I hope our new friend is going to be happy in its new home. Bye for now. Bye bye.